In this video, I just want to talk about heat recovery. It's a topic that is going to be useful to you, irrespective of what engineering industry you're working in, because it's relevant to so many different things that we do, especially nowadays, because what we try to do is reclaim heat in order to increase efficiency. In the past, nobody really cared about efficiency. We could have an inefficient process or cycle and nobody cared. Nowadays, fuel costs a lot of money. Energy costs money. Pollution costs money. In short, inefficiencies cost money. So we want to make everything as efficient as possible. One of the ways that we can do this is by recapturing waste heat. We call this heat recovery. Here is our first example. What we're looking at here is a turbocharger. That's this item here. Got a blue arrow going in. That's our compressor on one side. And on the other side, we've got our exhaust gas turbine. The turbine is used to drive this compressor wheel over here. We're taking exhaust gases from our engine, which is over here. And those exhaust gases are flowing out of these valves at the top. Here is one, here is another. They're gonna flow into this passage. They're gonna come along here where our red arrow is, and then they're gonna go into the turbocharger. So let's just follow it up along here, down, across, and then into the turbocharger, specifically the exhaust gas side of the turbocharger. We do this because we want to recapture the energy from our exhaust gases in order to rotate our compressor. When we rotate the compressor, we compress more air into our combustion space, that is over here, and that means we can add more fuel and get more power out from the engine. This is one example of heat recovery. If we didn't have this arrangement, the exhaust gases would just pass out of the engine and they'd go into the atmosphere. By installing a turbocharger, we can increase the power output of the engine, so we're having a higher power to weight ratio. If we take a look at this other model over here, this is a large turbocharger. You'll see it installed on very large ship engines. Our compressor wheel is over here. And on the opposite side, we have our exhaust gas turbine. Air gets drawn in through this filter over here. And to give you an idea roughly how big this turbocharger might be, the ships that I worked on, big container ships, they had air filters like this one here, which were roughly the same size as me. I'm about six foot two, so about two meters in height. And the diameter of this filter here was greater than my own height. Not only that, there was quite a sucking force that went through this gauze here and passed through the filter. That was all the air being drawn into the engine and there was a lot of it. So in the marine engineering space, in the maritime industry, these turbochargers are huge. They weigh tons. When you're pushing a ship across an ocean and you're traveling at the same speed for maybe 10 days, 14 days, turbochargers increase the efficiency of the engine significantly. Let's take a look at another example. This time round, we've got something that is actually quite similar to a turbocharger. This is a jet engine, also known as a gas turbine. We draw air in from this end here, the air comes along here, and then we burn fuel in this section. The hot gases then pass across the turbine, and we use some of that power to drive the compressor wheels over here. That allows us to draw more air into the gas turbine, and we can burn more fuel, which creates more hot gas, which passes over our turbine, which we can then use again to draw more air into the gas turbine. In many ways, it's very similar to a turbocharger. We have combustion, we generate exhaust gases, the exhaust gases flow over a turbine, and some of that power is transferred to a compressor to draw in more air so that we can burn more fuel and generate more power. There are other ways though in which we can reclaim heat in order to increase the efficiency of a machine or process. In this example here, we've got what's called a heat recovery steam generator. We have a gas turbine that's installed down this end. The gas turbine sends exhaust gases into the heat recovery steam generator through this section here. As the exhaust gases pass through the heat recovery steam generator, 
we've got heat exchangers within the heat recovery steam generator. I'm going to call it HRSG for short or HERSIG because saying heat recovery steam generator gets a bit tiresome. So the exhaust gases are coming in on the left. They're coming along here. They're flowing across here. And as they do so, they're flowing across heat exchangers. This superheater, evaporator, superheater, economizer, superheater, evaporator, economizer. These are all just heat exchangers. Think of loads of tubes full of water with the exhaust gases passing around them. The exhaust gases give their heat to the water. The water gets hotter and hotter and some of that water turns to steam. We can then send the steam to a steam turbine, or we can also use the steam just in a production process. Maybe we need to heat something up in order to get it to change state, or maybe we have to heat up some tanks. This is quite a common usage for steam. Maybe we have to heat up some pipelines. There are many, many applications for steam. So this is another good way to reclaim some heat. Not only that, to reclaim the heat and increase efficiency. Once we've harnessed as much energy from the exhaust gases as possible, as much thermal energy, we're then going to send them into this stack here and we'll discharge the exhaust gases to atmosphere. Where else can we use this process of reclaiming heat in order to increase process efficiency? Well, let's just pull up a compressor for a moment. Here is a piston compressor. It's got two stages. We've got the one stage on the right here. This will be the low pressure stage. And then we've got the high pressure stage over here. This is a two stage compressor. Although this compressor is quite small, just imagine for a moment we had a bigger compressor. You can already see, even with this small compressor, that it generates a lot of heat. You can see this because these are heat exchanger fins. We put them on any item that generates heat in order to dissipate that heat into the ambient environment. So this is a giveaway that we're generating a lot of heat. If we've got larger compressors, what we might do rather than waste this heat is capture it, or I should say reclaim it, and then use that heat to heat up a building as an example. And this is something now that's becoming more and more common. Why pay to heat a building if you've got six air compressors in a room, they're quite big, they're generating a lot of heat. Why not just reclaim that heat and then use it to heat the building? That way we save on heating costs. If you ever visit an industrial plant where you need heat as part of the process, sometimes they'll locate the plant next to another manufacturing facility that produces a lot of heat. For example, if we have a smelter, then one of the byproducts of a smelter is that it generates a lot of heat. They can't use all this heat, so they might be willing to sell some of it to a neighboring plant that wants to purchase it and use that heat as part of its production process. For example, if you built a brewery next to a smelter, a chocolate factory, vegetable oil refinery, all of these places also need heat. So keep that in mind when you're walking around the plant, when you're walking around an industrial site, or when you're at work, wherever you may be, See if there's anything around you that's generating a lot of heat. If it's not being reclaimed, you want to ask yourself, why? There's almost something you can be doing with that wasted energy. Remember that energy costs a lot of money, so we don't just want to discharge it out of a stack into the atmosphere. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about engineering topics, then do be sure to check out other Savory Snacks videos. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. And you can also follow me on LinkedIn if you want to be notified whenever we release new videos. Thanks very much for your time.